Thank you. Thank you for the kind invitation to be here today, and I will talk about uh, the influence of uh, toxicity of antiretrovirals uh, on com comorbidities. And uh, let's start by saying that uh, these are data from the British Columbia uh, showing that uh, comorbidities uh, appear in people with HIV earlier than in the general population, but we should remember the age of uh, 45, 50 years as the age um, when comorbidities may uh, appear in general. Also, it has been mentioned previously, uh, when talking about adverse effects, it's not only uh, toxicities, but uh, also some other characteristics uh, which may be involved. And I would say that now short-term toxicities are uh, very uncommon and uh, can, uh, have been uh, very well managed by the uh, improvement of antiretrovirals, but it is long-term toxicities uh, which uh, may be more important and less uh, well known. And uh, also, not all toxicities can be equally monitored or detected. Think about uh, CMS problems, how uh, the patient may explain how the tools uh, for detection uh, may be uh, subjective or, or lacking, and think also about uh, the bone uh, with devices such as DEXA, etc., and also kidney just with simple uh, blood tests. And uh, it has been already mentioned that uh, there are uh, also factors other than antiretrovirals which may be influencing uh, um, uh, tolerability of antiretrovirals and importantly age, uh, increasing age, sex, drug-drug interactions and certainly genetics of some drugs. So just uh, starting with uh, every family and following the European AIDS uh, Society guidelines, Think about uh, nucleosides, and uh, fortunately, Cidobudin is uh, no longer used in, in general, and uh, uh, remarkably, uh, 3TC and FTC have no uh, toxicities at all, despite, uh, in the case of 3TC, more than uh, 30 years of use. So we will focus on Abacavir, uh, TDF, and TAF. And for Abacavir, uh, there is a well-known cardiovascular toxicity, and the pathogenesis is mediated through uh, leukocyte addition and increased platelet aggregation. And there are data showing that anti-aggregants such as aspirin may reduce uh, uh, platelet hyperreactivity, but the clinical impact of this uh, uh, effect is uh, completely unknown. Also regarding the kidney and many other uh, functions in different systems in the body, uh, the, there may be uh, decreases with age, this is uh, expected, and uh, at the bottom of the slide you can see that the uh, overall uh, annual decrease for uh, um, 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 old patients is about uh, 0.5 or 1 milliliters per minute per year. But uh, uh, it should be considered a, a rapid uh, a glomerular filtration uh, rate decline if uh, higher than three milliliters per minute per year. So keep in mind this uh, figure. Tenofovir, uh, in the form of TDF, significantly lowers uh, glomerular filtration rate, but effect is limited and stable. And here you have uh, some uh, relatively old data from uh, meta-analysis and a huge cohort showing that the decrease with TDF versus other non-TDF nucleosides is about four milliliters per minute, and it does not increase over time. However, uh, if you can, if you can uh, see the way of uh, excreting tenofovir, tenofovir is mostly excreted through glomerular filtration uh, into the urine, and a small part of uh, tenofovir uh, goes into the, the uh, blood and is uh, uh, excreted through the tubular cell. So this small part of uh, tenofovir, if there is any kind of uh, um, kidney insufficiency, may be increased, and it may be further increased with increasing age, lower BMI, and uh, boosters, particularly ritonavir more than covicistat. So starting a vicious circle leading to higher blood uh, plasma concentrations of tenofovir and um, uh, higher tenofovir into the tubular cells and uh, higher toxicity leading to um, a negative vicious circle. 
Regarding the bone, we uh, all also know that TDF uh, compared with uh, Abacavir in this case uh, uh, leads to a higher decline in bone mineral uh, density, uh, but this happens in uh, the first year of uh, therapy, initially in uh, antiretroviral naive patients and also when switching uh, from uh, already suppressed patients. And the effect afterwards, uh, after the first year, is uh, relatively stable. Also, we know, we know that uh, um, TDF use is not necessarily associated with uh, bone mineral uh, uh, density uh, loss over time, particularly in patients who are uh, uh, bone healthy. Uh, here you have data from the uh, uh, one, uh, one, 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 oh, oh, 109 study switching from albitegravir, cobisistat, TDF, FTC uh, to albitegravir, cobisistat, TAF, FTC, and you can see that there is an increase in bone mineral density with the switching to TAF, but there is no uh, substantial uh, bone mineral uh, density decrease over time with TDF. And also the data regarding the association of uh, TDF exposure with bone fractures is um, um, uh, not necessarily um, uh, positive, and you can have here uh, data from the French cohort uh, at, uh, at the top, and also from the um, um, uh, North American cohort and NA cohort, cohort uh, at the bottom, and you can see that uh, the use of uh, TDF is not significantly associated with uh, bone fractures. And also, uh, and this is in general uh, mm, uh, true, uh, treating uh, the uh, uh, comorbidity with the general therapy that it is used for the uh, population, uh, let's say in this case, uh, uh, bifosonate, uh, than uh, with the intervention that would be more specific for HIV uh, infected people, which would be switching TDF, uh, leads to uh, better outcomes, uh, the general intervention, than the uh, antiretroviral-based intervention. And here you have a study we collaborated with uh, Australian uh, clinicians, uh, with people uh, uh, having uh, TDF uh, uh, being undetectable, having um, um, a glomerular filtration rate above uh, 60 milliliters per minute, and a low bone mineral density. And you can see that after two years, uh, both interventions, uh, either solindronic acid or switching uh, TDF, uh, uh, the solindronic acid was without switching TDF, led to an increase in bone mineral density, being uh, double that of the bifosonate as, as compared with the TDF switch. And what was important is that the solindronate effect was similar to that seen in the general population not being HIV. So TDF in this case uh, did not uh, have any uh, negative effect if uh, bifosonate uh, was used. Regarding uh, TAF, I have to say that uh, there is a, a clear effect in, in weight gain, which is higher than that for other uh, nucleosides, and this has been uh, much uh, better uh, uh, seen in naive patients, as well as uh, with any other uh, type of antiretroviral therapy. But uh, in treated patients, uh, it has also been seen from switching to, uh, from uh, TDF to TAF, but also from uh, other uh, non-TDF agents, such as Abacavir to TAF, as seen at the bottom in this Swiss cohort study uh, um, um, you can see here. And also the data regarding the weight gain with uh, TDF to TAF switch uh, seems to be um, um, an acute effect, or at least uh, uh, the effect is being more pronounced at the beginning uh, uh, after the switch. And you can see here data from the states uh, presented by Paddy Malon uh, two years ago and already published, uh, in which you can see that the effect of the switch regarding weight was uh, much bigger in the nine first months, and afterwards, the slopes of the weight uh, evolution were similar to those previous to the switch. Regarding non-nucleosides, uh, uh, efavirenz is uh, uh, obviously uh, associated with uh, CNS problems. It was thought that it was a uh, self-limited uh, and also mild or clinically tolerated effort, and in fact, if you remember, Efavirenz was uh, uh, the most recommended 
the preferred, the pre, the preferred antiretroviral regime during many years. So certainly it was uh, uh, relatively well tolerated. But uh, data uh, afterwards uh, showed that this uh, uh, mild uh, toxicity was not so mild and it could be persistent. And in fact, in this cohort from Chelsea Westminster Hospital, uh, uh, many patients, uh, a huge proportion of patients who discontinued uh, efavirin did so after uh, um, a long period of time, uh, sometimes after uh, more than one year. So certainly the toxicity may be mild but persistent over time. And also, more importantly, although the risk is uh, low, but it is uh, higher for efavirenz than non-efavirenz therapy regarding an important side effect, which is uh, suicidal risk. And this is uh, uh, shown by different studies, the retrospective pool ACTG studies on the left and the start sub studies and analysis on the right. So certainly, efavirenz use may have cumulative problems regarding important risks. What about protests in inhibitors and, and boosters? Well, we have to say that this lipidemia uh, with current PIs is less common than with other ones. This lipidemia, however, uh, uh, with current PIs is more common than with other third agents, and this lipidemia is more common with ritonavir boosting than with COVID start boosting PIs. And it is also reversible, in, at least in part, on discontinuing PI-based therapy. The higher rate of myocardial infarction associated with PIs, uh, uh, with first-generation PIs, was uh, in part uh, um, um, uh, due to uh, metabolic abnormalities, insulin resistance and, and lipid uh, abnormalities. But uh, nowadays, uh, uh, most uh, PIs have a, a much less uh, metabolic impact. However, there was some information from uh, darunavir, uh, uh, ritonavir, compared with atazanavir, ritonavir in the DADA study, showing a higher risk for uh, cardiovascular uh, events with darunavir, ritonavir, and not with atazanavir, ritonavir. However, this work, uh, although large, uh, obviously is a, a cohort study, uh, has not been uh, confirmed in other studies, and uh, there is no evidence with Arunavir covicistat. And certainly uh, with Arunavir, Ritonavir, there were patients that were treated with double Ritonavir dose, and this was not uh, po uh, possible to take into account in the, in the analysis. So certainly we do not know, but, but the, 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 the data so far is uh, uh, as uh, you can see. Again, <laughs> intervening on, on the uh, problem uh, with a measure that could be applied to the general population <clears throat> is much more effective than switching antiretroviral therapy. And again, this study showing uh, in people treated with PIs and showing uh, hyperlipidemia, the, the effect of decreasing the effect of decreasing uh, um, uh, LDL was much higher with the statin than uh, with switching antiretroviral therapy. Certainly, uh, both uh, interventions may be needed in uh, um, uh, many patients. What about the association between uh, a decrease in glomerular filtration rate and <coughs> cumulative uh, atazanavir or lopinavir uh, use? Well, uh, the data so far uh, is that uh, uh, with uh, ritonavir boosting, uh, boosted uh, PIs, uh, we have no data with uh, covicistat boosting. And uh, um, uh, uh, although uh, we have uh, this information and this data at, uh, are from um, um, uh, at the bottom, uh, uh, you can see at, at the top uh, the study from the TAD, uh, uh, showing an increase in, in the, uh, the decrease uh, in the prevalence of, uh, in the incidence of uh, decreased uh, glomerular filtration rate with atazanavir on the right and darunavir, ritonavir on the left. And uh, below, you can see a switching study from uh, the UK in which uh, the patient switched from atazanavir or lopinavir to darunavir had uh, um, uh, a trend or, or, or an improvement uh, or in glomerular filtration rate. But as you can see uh, in uh, both tables, uh, I have uh, underlined uh, it, 
the effect was largely mediated by TDF use. So again, uh, opening uh, the question whether the effect attributed to PIs may be, a, in fact, uh, an interaction with uh, TDF due to boosters. What about integrase inhibitors? Well, <clears throat> we know about integrase inhibitors that uh, all of them have been associated with uh, neurotoxicity, and uh, there are some facts. Uh, the higher, the, there, are, there have been higher rates in cohort studies than in randomized clinical trials. Uh, there are more reports with dolutegravir than with uh, other uh, integrase inhibitors. I have to say that with tegravir uh, has appeared later in the market and therefore uh, that may be a reason for accounting of uh, less uh, communications with uh, tegravir. There have been, however, in clinical trials, similar rates of CNS adverse effects be between Victegravir and Dolutegravir, and in general, these effects, uh, uh, in contrast to those of efavirenz, are mild and self-limited. What about uh, weight? Uh, again, uh, uh, integrase inhibitors in general, and particularly second generation, uh, uh, generation integrase inhibitors, Victegravir and Dolutegravir, have been associated with higher uh, weight gain in uh, randomized clinical trials and also in clinical cohorts in uh, naive patients and in experienced patients. The effect in experienced patients, again, uh, similar to TAF, seems to be much higher in the uh, months or a uh, few years following the, the switch and later on May, there may be uh, some kind of a stabilization, but this is not completely uh, known. However, <clears throat> it is also uh, um, uh, known that there may be a, synergis a synergism in weight gain between integrase inhibitors and TAF, and uh, here you can see the increase in uh, uh, the prevalence of uh, uh, higher than 7% increase in BMI with the use of dolutegravir with TAF and uh, much less uh, with uh, any of these agents uh, without the other. However, let me say something about uh, BMI in uh, people living with HIV. And in general, uh, people living with HIV have a lower BMI than uh, non-HIV infected adults. And uh, therefore, the prevalence of obesity is much lower. And also with therapy, uh, people living with HIV seem to be catching up non-HIV infecting adults, and the uh, trends in the increase in, in BMI are much uh, steeper, are much uh, uh, more pronounced than in the general population, as you can see here in this uh, Kaiser Permanente cohort uh, from the States. Uh, the increase in weight is much higher in those that may be uh, normal or underweight and those uh, that may be overweight or obese, in which the, uh, in, uh, the trends in weight uh, um, uh, seem horizontal uh, over time. And also, uh, as uh, depicted here, uh, the weight gain in antiretroviral naive people living with HIV in advance, which was so um, um, impressive for, for all of us, uh, seems to be a kind of return to normal. And you can see here the different uh, BMIs uh, on a starting uh, um, uh, therapy uh, in, uh, uh, in people, uh, uh, not on starting therapy, but on week uh, 144, so the, after uh, gaining weight. And you can see that uh, these uh, weights were, in general, uh, lower or equal in the case of dolutegravir to those of the South African adult population. It's interesting to know that uh, uh, there is a higher CD4 cell count with uh, higher BMI uh, gain, and uh, one could say, at least in, in naive patients, that this, this may be uh, the, the higher BMI, the increase in BMI may be a kind of uh, in, immune-related uh, phenomenon, and uh, this is open to, to discussion and obviously it's a matter of, of investigation. So, in conclusion, I would say that uh, from the data we have, and uh, at least in my perspective, in the case of Abacavir, we should uh, avoid it if there is a high cardiovascular risk, and if used, obviously, there is a, a huge reason for uh, using antiretroviral therapy. For TDF, 
avoid if the glomerular filtration rate is lower than 90, uh, lower than normal, and there is a rapid uh, glomerular filtration decline because although you may, you may have still a relatively preserved glomerular filtration rate, there may be uh, a risk for a uh, rapid decrease over time, and this may be uh, uh, not reversible. Obviously, uh, avoid TDF if there is more than one risk factor for TDF-related kidney toxicity. For TDF regarding the bone, consider alternatives if low bone mineral density, but the recommendation is not so straight. For TAF, there, there is no evidence of recommendations on weight, and one could say that in those people that are already overweight or obese, uh, you may consider alternatives, particularly if TAF use, is used with um, second generation integrase inhibitor. In the case of efavirenz, avoid if pre-existing mental health conditions. In the case of PIs, avoid if pre-existing uh, dyslipidemia. Consider alternatives if a statin therapy is needed. And uh, remember that COVID-STAT increases lipids less than Ritonavir. And for integrase inhibitors, there is no evidence so far for recommendations on CNES or weight issues. And one consider in patients with CNES problems or with uh, overweight or obese uh, uh, alternatives other than integrase inhibitors. Thank you for your attention.